Wow, here we are, folks. Hey, the goodness of God continues forever. Why boast to say yourself in mischief, almighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. This psalm was written by David at the time when Doeg, the Edomite, caused David much harm. And that day, can you imagine having a, a guy coming around that you couldn't find him and you couldn't see him and he was hid away, but causing you much harm? Even though the psalm concerns itself with David, even more so it concerns itself with the Antichrist, who will declare war on, with Israel at the midpoint of the Great Tribulation. Therefore, David is a type of Christ in this psalm, and Doeg is a type of the Antichrist. And so we have a picture, a typical, a typeology of a picture here, printed for us in our mind's eye. The Holy Spirit uses this occasion to portray not only that which had happened, but also that which will come in the distant future during the Great Tribulation. In Matthew 24, 21, you say, we're way back in Psalm uh, 52, a thousand years maybe or so, before uh, maybe 2,000 years before the Great Tribulation. And here is a writing about it. Yes, God wrote the whole book. He knew the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. And he knew what to put where and when to put it and why to put it. So there are a few people in the Bible who were more uh, treacherous or evil than Doeg the Edomite. He, he uh, fleshly accused the high priest and his family, falsely accused the high priest and his family who were true to David, which resulted in uh, them losing their lives. During the latter half of the Great Tribulation, the Antichrist will totally fulfill this passage. Uh, Daniel said, he shall speak great words. Great swelling words he talks about. This uh, Antichrist speaking uh, in this uh, period of time. And uh, uh, we will see that as we study that. Who's he going to speak against? He's going to speak against the Most High. In Daniel 7.25, we see a picture of that. James addresses the uh, tongue saying it is full of deadly poison. James 3.8 Only the Holy Spirit uh, could be uh, considered here as the tongue he is talking about. And verse 3 uh, You love evil more than good and lying rather than to speak righteousness. Selah. This fits Doeg, and it fits the Antichrist. So we have a picture of the Antichrist in this man, Doeg. So you love all uh, devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. Doeg illustrates the Antichrist. He plots the destruction of David. He loves evil rather than good. He falsely accused the high priest. Abimelech, and he rejected at Saul's marvelous uh, command of authorizing him to destroy Abimelech's uh, entire family plus many other priests. Through lie and deceit, this happened. God shall likewise destroy you forever. He shall take you away and pluck you out of your dwelling place and root you out of the land of the living, Selah. This speaks both of Doeg and the Antichrist, of which Doeg was a type of. And 
So he, he is going to be taken out of the way. This speaks of both Doag and Antichrist. Okay, verse 6. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Uh, these words are but an uh, indication of the laughter of Israel concerning the Antichrist when he is destroyed by the Lord Jesus Christ at the Lord's second coming. Israel is called here the righteous. That is beautiful. That Israel is back considered the righteous. And so they will be when they accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior at his second advent. Isn't it amazing how the Antichrist has kept the Israelite people from accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as the Messiah? Lo, this is the man who made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. Hey, no doubt, Saul made Doeg rich. However, the gold and silver given to him by Saul could in no way protect him in his wickedness. Likewise, the Antichrist will have great riches, Daniel 11.43. However, those who trust in riches instead of trusting in God will ultimately fail. Verse 8, But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. As verse 8 and verse 9 portray David at this particular time, they even more uh, portray the Messiah in the second day, coming day. Jesus Christ perfectly and eternally trust. He is the green olive tree. Jesus Christ is the green olive tree. I will praise you forever because you have done it and I will wait on your name for it is good before your saints. David praises the name of the Lord for his victory over the efforts of Satan to destroy him. In its fuller meaning, it pertains to the Messiah as he praises God in the exhortation of his wrath from the Antichrist. It is a divine action which is pointed to the Word. And that's it. The Word of God is, is the, the end prediction. The Word of God is the true and living Word. It is the beginning and it is the end. And we'll see that in next time. And we'll see you next time. Right. Bye-bye.